<laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to All Access, and I want to give you the honors of introducing. This is our actual first guest on this cruise, and I'm so excited. I love him so much. We all love him. We love his music. And uh, Tony, take it away. Well, you know, I'm so privileged to be here because actually we had a, a gospel event oh, yeah. today. That I missed. And uh, I cried mm -hmm. on stage. Mm -hmm. I got so filled up with, with uh, you know, love and hope. That's beautiful. And uh, God is my Savior, yeah. you know. Amen. And the man that had everybody crying, I just had maybe one or two people crying. <laughs> he had everybody <laughs> <Okay>. crying. <laughs> was the man that's going to be on this show, mm. he and one of the Manhattans, you know. Ooh. That is Mr. Gerald Austin. Yes. I'm giving him a standing O. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome back. Oh, wait a minute now. He did say the Manhattans, so we've got to mention one of the Manhattans who happened to join him on stage today. Put your hands together for Troy. Woo, yes. Absolutely. Welcome back. You know what, the last time... I was on this cruise, I saw you, right. and I'm so happy to be back on this cruise. Are you? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh, I was elated when we found out we were coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's it's such a, um, it's a wonderful cruise because you can be yourself. Um, you see all your fans, and they let you know how they feel about you. And they also respect your time. You know, we can walk around the ship and, you know, they may ask you to take a photo or something. But it's just, it's a wonderful feeling. And it's like being back up on a family reunion. Oh, that's beautiful. At a family now, reunion. Now, how long have you guys been together when it comes to uh, the music business, you know? Um, I've been with the group 51 years. Wow. And the group has been together 59. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. And this is the baby of the group. Uh huh. Twenty. Well, he's, well, he's the quiet. He's the quiet one. It's, yeah, it's, it's, when, you know, I, I see him. I see him, but he's real quiet. You know, oh, when he yeah. gets on stage, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, Troy. Leave it for the stage. Okay. Well, we have you here now. We want to talk to you. So, how have you been doing since the last time we saw you? Uh wonderful. Uh, we just recently lost one of the members of the group, so I'm sort of up and down. You know. Yeah. I can recall last time we were here, he was here. So each time I, you know, as I walk around the ship, I think about him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. still fresh in our mind, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, well. That's got to be just a crazy feeling, just yeah. being on the ship and you guys were here together the last time. Right. Is the band doing all right? I mean. Yeah. We're, we're holding up. You know, we we realize that we have to continue to move forward. And I think, they, in fact, I think I know that David would have wanted us to. Just keep on pressing on, and um, and that was his excitement when we were working together. When he was on stage, he was like in heaven. You know, he enjoyed himself so, like we all did. But and I know that he would want us to just keep going on. Yeah, you know, we we never get over get over it. You know, it's like when I lost my father. You know, I think about him all the time. You yeah. know, and we never we never get over it. Yeah. You know, and it's so difficult. And I can imagine how you guys feel, you know, being here and he not being here. And, right, right. Um, it's just hard to explain because everyone deals with that differently. Right. You know, right. and uh, again, uh, Gerald was on stage today and I could feel every bone in his Ooh. body. Wow. You know, I'm getting chills right now oh, thinking about goodness. it. <laughs> how many? How many were at that breakfast today? Oh, oh, my goodness, it sounds... You know, I love the fact that there is this outlet for you. I mean, as you mentioned, the Manhattans have been around for 59 years. Yeah. And being in a band, having a band member, that's that's family. Yes. That's probably closer than some of your biological that's relatives. It. So after spending, you know, that much time together, you rehearse together, you, you perform together, I could imagine when you are performing, David is always... Still oh, with you. Yes, he was a character. <laughs> he was a, he was a character. No matter what happened, full you you full of life. You could be 
um, you know, as you know, you you work together, you live together all the time. You're not getting along together all the time. Right. And when you have those moments, he'd be he was one of the people that could turn a sad moment or a moment that wasn't too good, cheerful, back to a cheerful moment. Right. He he would find something to do or say. And his partner over here too, so <laughs> you couldn't stay mad at him long. No, you could. He'd make you laugh yeah. off of anything. So, yeah. You know, how does it feel when when people want you to do the same songs over and over again after all these? I mean, a lot of people, you know, say, "Well, let, let me hear something else." And, and most people, when it comes to listening to Manhattan, is they want to hear the hits. Exactly. But I'm wondering how you guys feel about. Uh, the songs that people want to hear as opposed to things that you might want to do a little different. Right. You know? Well, we try and add um, one or two songs, other songs other than ours, into the show. But um, you can't get around it. You just can't get around it. If fans come to hear you sing those songs. And um, I, I realize, I know the, uh, the audience may not notice it, but I know Troy can attest that each night that we go on stage to sing those songs is a little bit different. Oh, it's a little bit, it, the feeling, the feeling that we get from our audience, the feelings we have when we go on stage, and it, in some small way, there's a sm minor change in what we're doing. Okay. After yeah. 30 years of doing this, and I'm sure Gerald will agree, doing it longer than me, I have yet to get the feeling, you know, I'm so sick of singing this song. <laughs> I've, I've never had that feeling. Yeah. Wow. It's always exciting to do it, even though we do it the same way sometimes, or maybe yeah. like Joe said, a little different. It's always exciting. Wow. Which That's is so good because yeah. you hear some artists. Yeah. Remember when uh, Bobby McFerrin had Don't Worry, Be Happy? And that song was so big, and everywhere he went, people wanted to hear a song. And he finally came out and said, enough! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not singing it. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Be, worry if you want. I don't even care. <laughs> so it's good. It's good when you have a song that you actually love mm, yourself. Yeah. Because honestly... When I'm at your shows, if you're not if you're not playing my songs, I'm going to be feeling some kind of <laughs> yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, I think one of my most favorite songs that um, I've ever recorded, and it was our first big hit, really first big hit, was "There's No Me Without You." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, thank you. Yeah, Sonny wrote that um, the same year we signed with Columbia Records in '72. And um, at the international convention, they used that song as the theme, There's No Me Without You. Ooh. And that was one of my first times performing with the orchestra. And that was with uh, MFSB. Oh, oh boy, they, they, oh, my God, oh did my they play goodness. it. Oh, my goodness. You know, no, it's it's funny. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say... One of my questions was, even though you're you're singing these classics and you love the songs and we love the songs and thank God you're singing them over and over, but there are ways to make it different. And that's one of them. So, yes. you know, with an orchestra, yes. are there any other types of uh, music genres that you would like to do with your songs? Wow. Um, like reggae or... Yes, we did. You know, oh, we have a... There's a reggae version of Shining Star. We did it with, uh, what's the, what, the artist is We did, we actually recorded on that particular album, we had a, a song called uh, Men Cry Too as well. And um, I forgot the artist. Oh man. Oh man, I can't think of it. I can't name. think of it either. From, he did a reggae version of, of Shining Star. Shaggy? Yeah, was it Shaggy? No, 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 it wasn't Shaggy. I wish you almost it was. had me that. <laughs> no, you almost had me. Uh, I wish it was. Oh, my God. I can't remember his name. But it did really well. It did very well. Yeah. Oh, very right. well, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, well. I'll have to look that one up. You know, I was going to ask before Angela so rudely interrupted me. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I had a conversation with a, a friend of mine who's in the music business, and we were talking about a guy who said something about the songs that he created, I think it was either, I can't remember who it was, the artist exactly, but it was based on creating hits and, and, and the fact that, the fact that you guys have created these hits, how do you get above that? And some people say, 
you set the bar so high you can't get get back over the bar. Mm. It's it's and it's an interesting concept, it is. you know. It is. Uh, and I don't know how you feel about well, this, that that, um, that concept when, as well. You know, when we re, uh, recorded "Kiss and Say Goodbye," nobody liked it. What? And because it wasn't finished, first of all, my my vocal was a scratch vocal. Huh. Uh, the backgrounds had parts to be finished, but it had been sitting in the can for eighteen months. And so Columbia Records released it, and rest is history. Um, but my our manager told us at that time when we started the next album, she said, "Don't try to." write something better than Kiss and Say Goodbye. Just write a song. You because go. you cannot top that. Just just like me and Mrs. Jones with Billy Paul. Mm -hmm. He could never mm -hmm. top that song. Yeah. You know, so you just have to move on to the next song and yeah. pray and hope that you get a good one. And which we did. We um, got Shining Star. It feels so good to be loved so bad. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, they weren't quite as big, but they were big, they were big songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that seems to be very good. That's wisdom yeah. that some of the young bloods can probably, yeah. you know, yeah. use. Because I assume that uh, you write a big hit, you figure, well, I can write another one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> mm. Or maybe you can't write another one. Yeah. You know, I don't know, you know. But you can't, you can't write it if you're constantly thinking about the hit that Switch you just your had. Focus. Yeah. Your focus, you split your focus. So if you if you write something, um, just go with that, with that feeling, you know. And we did a lot of our writing about life, about um, we may have seen something, read something in the newspaper or, or saw something on television or heard a conversation between two people and got an idea and we would write it. What about now? Are you writing? Are you still putting yes, out? Yes. So let yes. us know what you're okay. I like that. We have um, a new CD titled The Manhattans featuring Gerald Alston, The Legacy Continues, Ooh. which is here in the shop. You can uh -huh. pick it up. And um, we have a new single. We've, we released two singles that charted. Um, the first single went to number one on the uh, independent charts. It's titled What About You, which we'll be doing tonight for the first time. Ooh. The pandemic wouldn't allow us to work, so we couldn't do it. <laughs> so we're doing it tonight for the first time. And we just uh, released a new single uh, from that same CD called Love Ride. Mm. Yeah. Now, and Troy here's, was right. Here's a question I have, a quick one, when it comes to that song that you're going to perform tonight. Yeah. Tell me about the words. What? Where did the, the idea come from, and, and how was it written? I thought I saw him come in here. Um Good. Uh, no, that was None what about Colt, you, Colt? Colt, right. Colt. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Colt had uh, I keep one of our keyboard players. He had this track, and um, so he had the hook line. What about you? And he said, "Oh, okay." And so he asked me. He said, "Just sing what you feel." And I just started singing, it's been so long since you let love in. So many ups and downs, you don't know how to begin. But I want to tell you, just one day at a time, give me a chance and I'll make you mine. And what about you? Hmm. And it, that's how it came about. <laughs> you know what, I think yeah. I can do that. It's been a long time. <laughs> and I was not here, but I'm here today. Tony, <laughs> no. I mean, I thought I could do it. <laughs> now, and, it seems so easy. Now, believe it or not, um, the this new single "Love Ride," which Curtis and I wrote, it 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 almost was the same way. Curtis had the idea; he started writing, and then it just. The lyrics just came, you know. That's beautiful. You know, I like people, a lot of people. Real quick, a lot of people don't understand writing, so to speak. Yeah. You know, right? I, mean, I just like how Gerald just ignored what you did. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, let me just you know, keep talking. I kind of hit a bad spot on the second line. <laughs> Ooh, he was cool. He's like, I'm just you not going to acknowledge it. <laughs> that was actually the first time I tried to sing. You, you sing know? beautifully, Tony. You've got to sing. You did good. Did he that not? was real yeah. sweet. I tried to read. It's been a long time. Oh. 
<laughs> that came from oh, him. Oh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting carried away. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? I love that you write, you're continuing to write. And like you said, you're not trying to top some of the other stuff. You're just going forward. Yes. And you're still writing about life and love and your, your experiences. What inspires Gerald Austin, and I should say the Manhattans, what inspires you these days? I mean, the world is, you know, in a crazy place just coming out of this pandemic. But what do you draw the, from? What's happening today is what gives me peace when I see. Mm-hmm. You know, I can, um, when I, just like this morning in the gospel show, you know, I love gospel. I've been singing gospel all my life. Mm-hmm. And when... When I sing gospel, I get a piece from God that's like none other. Mm-hmm. And um, and when I sing R&B, it's the same thing. I get a piece. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's a moment where I can turn, turn off everything and not dismiss it that it's not there because I know I have to go back to it yeah. and deal with it. But it, it gives me a peace, mm-hmm. you know, and, and music. That's what happened. Music gives me a peace that I can just relieve myself from the problems right then and then when I come back I can look at them a little bit different right and Troy I think a true artist is inspired by just life in general different things and you can take something from every aspect of life Mm -hmm. and put that in your art form Mm -hmm. and truly express yourself that way and and find peace Mm -hmm. and that's what drives an artist to do so you seeking that peace especially with what's going on today I mean that if you're not looking for peace today, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, yeah. does it? Does my voice sound like his when he talks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tony, you're so smooth. I mean, does, does that does, does that how I sound when I talk? love it? I, it's working. It's working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you feel like singing again? <laughs> no, but I. But it's interesting, Daryl, that you can do that without crying. Mm. You know, oh, I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how do you, you're reaching down in your soul and it's like all I could do was cry, you know? Sometimes um, the tears come. Uh, when I started this morning, I, I, I started getting choked up, but I realized that I had to, had, had to keep going, yeah. you know? And the audience got me through it, you know? They said, like, take your time, it's all right. Mm. And, and I was able to regroup. But there have been times when I've literally cried in, in, um, in the middle of a song. Yes, yeah, couldn't continue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to sing and cry yeah. Yeah. at the same time. Yes. Oh, you mean it's just, you've got to, one or the other, cause, yeah. right? You've got to just like stop, get yeah. it together. Yeah. I hate that I missed it this morning. I mean. Well, we don't know where you were at 10 a.m. this morning. <laughs> and I'm not going to ask where you were. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm here now. But, but you know, it's funny. When I did ask her, I got Angela, I got to say this now. Okay, fine. She said, well, I was doing my hair. And I, you know, <laughs> it was a little so fluff funny. here and there. And I, <laughs> He's like, is that your hair? <laughs> I'm like, this is my hair. <laughs> Since you brought it up. <laughs> you know what? I, I love. Well, you know, we try to be be loose on this show. Exactly. Right? I was just saying That's that we're, we're honest, we're family. Absolutely. How many first-time uh, all-access people? How many first-time cruisers? And Okay, so you've all been here before. So you know yeah. this is we how pros. we roll. We got pros out here. We are family. Oh, wow. And so is Gerald Austin. I mean, every single year we look forward, or every other year, just yeah. as often as you come, we look forward to seeing you, and your spirit you. is just beautiful. And I love that you sing R&B and you sing gospel. Oh, yeah. Whereas, you know, some people say you can only do one or the other, especially a lot of staunch gospel people figure mm-hmm. you can't sing secular music if you want to be a exactly. true gospel artist. Yet, you do both of them seamlessly. Well, I, um, I've been blessed my... I, I was raised in a singing family. My father was a Baptist minister, and he sang gospel. Mm. And my uncle, Johnny Fields, was one of the founding members of the Five Blind Boys of Alabama. Oh, I so love I was them. constantly around gospel groups. Yeah. Oh. And my father told me a long time ago, and I carry it with me, he said, God gave you a ministry. He gave you a voice to sing. He said, as long as you're singing to bring joy 
and happiness to mm-hmm. people, whether R and B, whether gospel, you're doing His will. Yeah. When you change the change it about and start denigrating women and right. and, right. and 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 going to a negative side, mm-hmm. then that's that's not it. Mm-hmm. He said, but as long as you bring in joy to people yeah. through the words that you sing, you're doing God's will. That's, mm-hmm. it. that's it right there. That's wonderful. Hey, Amen to that. You know, I'm I'm gonna do something real difficult right now. And I, I don't do this a lot, but I do do it a lot. And when I when I think about artists yeah, who are on, on stage that, that, that I want to hear, that I want to hear, I kind of ask them to do a little something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask them to do a little right. something, just a little something, I'm with a you. little I'm something with you. That, that, let, that can let us know that they're real gospel people. I like it. Ooh. You know they're they're mean? looking at each other, exactly. so they're kind of exactly. figures, they're figuring thinking something about it. They're, they're thinking, thinking about, about it. it. So, so would you guys mind doing a little something, you know, maybe just a little something? Especially since I missed the gospel. Some acapella, some (laughs) acapella. I missed it. (laughs) You know. (laughs) Um, Let me see. I heard somebody. Somebody. Okay, okay. I, I heard a thing back there. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven's home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> isn't, that some, isn't that something? No, you, we can't stop without uh, that other man over there doing a little something now. Come on. You know, that's the guy with shoot the real cute shoot voice him. that over there, you know. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> uh, I called you here today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, <laughs> okay. for a bit of bad news. <laughs> I can't see you anymore, baby, <laughs> because of my obligations and the ties that you have. Mm-hmm. We've been meeting here every year. <laughs> <laughs> and since this is the last, well, I won't say the last. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. but, and I'm that's sorry. A, that's a true testament that... Um, I just sing a gospel song that's true from the heart. He just sang, he just did the beginning of Kiss and Say Goodbye, which is a true story is about, it? about, you know, and I, oh. <laughs> I know, Uh-oh. I'm looking not for me. you. Not me, not I'm like, me. wait a minute. But I'm saying it's true in the sense that when Blue wrote it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that it happens all around the world. Yeah, now, um, Blue was asked, I remembered an interview one time, and he asked Blue, several interviews we had, they asked Blue, um, did you write the song about yourself? And he would just laugh. He'd just break right. out and laugh. <laughs> Every time. <Yep. laughs> so I guess, wait, hey, you know, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But that's something when you're, when you're an artist, you have to be vulnerable. And especially, you know, you're writing yeah. the song and then you're up here singing your song. You're totally exposed yeah have there been moments and this is you know for each of you when you know this is your story and you know it's your story and you just get caught up in your feelings on stage while you're performing it yes (laughs) yes tell us about that you know um (laughs) gosh uh, i i remember um we were playing and performing in washington dc and um, this was many years ago, and we were singing There's No Me Without You, and it's like the Spirit of God touched the guitar player. And when 
we finished the song, people were standing up shouting in, oh. in a, a club called the Mark IV. Wow. And um, we could, and, and after then, we actually tried to duplicate that or come back with something like, could never do it. Mm-hmm. Never do it. But, um, you know, sometimes we all get emotional uh, in, in singing, and, and um, Troy's gotten emotional. I've seen Dave, bless him, he's he's gotten emotional, you know, and even our musicians have gotten music, uh, gotten emotional, you know. We are, are truly a family, and um, the guys that we work with, you know, um, I, I can't say enough about them. I cannot say enough about them, you know, and, and, and we all ex- express our music differently, but it comes together as one, and um, you can tell when any one of us get emotional, mm-hmm. whether through the mu- instrument that they're playing or through us singing, but you can feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what would you tell the young bloods of today about music? I mean, has it has it changed from the time you started till till now? I mean, in wow. the sense that it, creatively, I'm yeah, it has changed a great deal because yes. um, auto tuning, <laughs> boy, phew. Mm-hmm. Um, the the production end of it is um, not using musicians anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring the guitar player in, he'll put his part on. You bring a keyboard player, he'll put a part on. And you bring a, a horn section in, they'll put a part on. And and the best music that I've ever recorded, and I would say to the young people today, is to do it together. Mm-hmm. You know, because you, you, get, you, feel, you get feeling off each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and be true to what, you are doing. Be true with the songs that you sing. As, as Troy always say, um, don't sing tunes. Mm-hmm. You know, sing songs. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to, um, and keep God first. No matter what you're doing, mm-hmm. you keep God first. I want to ask you, Troy, so what, tell us the difference between the two. It's like the, uh, the definition of perfection has changed. Perfection today, as far as music is concerned, is fixing each note and each everything is so mechanical now everything is too perfect and back in his era perfection was singing from your heart performing from your heart i mean a couple of weeks ago <laughs> a couple of weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> but you know and he still sings that way today and it still moves me uh, perhaps you as well um and that's a huge difference for me when i see bands perform um, you know, bands of yesteryear, if you will. Uh, there's slight mistakes here and there, but what comes across is the feeling, the emotion, and it makes you forget the little imperfection, and, and you somehow fall in love with those little imperfections yeah. because it oh, makes yeah. it that much more real, yeah. mm-hmm. as yeah. opposed to the you know the me- mechanical as- mechanical aspects of yeah. it. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that you said that because. That's so true. I mean, a lot of the things that, I, and you know, imperfections. I guess maybe using that word loosely, mm-hmm. um, that becomes a part of the art. Yeah, right. and you go back and try to duplicate it. I mean, and I think we all have done that. Like, if you write something that's really mm-hmm. great, right. and then you try to fix it, and mm-hmm. you keep trying to fix it, exactly, you exactly. find that that first way you did it, exactly, yeah, was really was good really the because best. that's what was from mm-hmm. the heart. It was organic, right. Whereas you're trying to manufacture a thing, right. and it becomes something else. It might be polished right. and perfect, but right. is it touching anybody's right. soul? Right, right, <laughs> right. When I first did the recording, what about you? I, that Gerald said they finished the track, and I came in, and I heard Gerald singing. I heard the track, and I said, let me just sit down and do a little rap on it. He said, sure, I just... Just play around with it. So I sat down, and the first thing I did, I said, okay, let me try something different. No, no, Lee, just like, <laughs> Lee, get out of here. Get out. <laughs> he wouldn't let me change. Wait. Is funny. he out there? Yeah, Colt was out there somewhere out there. Awesome. There he is. There he is. Yeah. Mr. Colt Younger. Yeah. Okay. So ha- yeah. have you, have, yeah. have you ever, have you ever, then this might be a dumb question I'm about to ask. But they say there's no dumb questions, they're only dumb answers. Mm-hmm. So it's on him next. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way so, Tony can flip a thing, right? <laughs> He's like, it's not going to be on you, me. Have you ever written a song you didn't like? Hmm. Yep. Mm. <laughs> All right. Way. Yep. Tell, tell us about it. Um, and why? It was a good question. I wrote a song with a, a, what, my partner. 
And it was called Don't Give All Your Love to Somebody Else. You got to save a little for yourself. Mm. I love that title. Yeah, yeah. but wow. the words, it, 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 I didn't like the melody. Mm. And, and because I couldn't tell the story the way I wanted to. Mm. And at that particular time, she thought it was great. And but I just didn't think it was it was happening. I got still got that song has to be about thirty years old, and I still have wow. the CD of it. I mean the uh, cassette of it, and maybe one day I'll I'll go in and finish it. And you still don't like it? Yeah. No, nope, I still don't like it. <laughs> Musically, I don't like it. I see. Yeah. We might hear a hip hop version. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has that ever been a genre that you try? And I, I, I say that because talking to a lot of artists <clears throat> like yourself, I love that you can stay in your lane yes. and not try to do what is popular in order exactly. to. Exactly. You know, just try to get with it and do what's selling. Mm. Have you ever been tempted to do something like that? No. Good. No. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, this is who we are. And um, you, can, you can improve on it. You can become progressive with it with the production. But you have to be who you are. Yeah. When you try to be somebody else, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Yeah. The roots are too deep and too yeah. thick. Yeah. Yeah. Uprooted and, you know. And it's confusing, I think, to the people who are following you and, and just down with you all the time. And then all of a sudden, I've seen it happen with so many different artists where, you know, maybe they feel like, okay, people aren't really buying my music anymore. So let me start dressing younger and, yeah. and change yeah. my whole style. Mm. And then it's worse. Now, you know, that's a good example of what we're doing today. Here on the Soul Train, you have all the groups from back in the day, yeah. mm-hmm. and they come out and pro- we'll come out and perform the way we did yes. back yes. in the day, mm-hmm. yes. and and it's well appreciated, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, and and it's it's this is a perfect example right here. Yeah. I couldn't couldn't find a, a better way to explain it. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And how do you, how do you, when you talk about back in the day and performing the way you used to perform, there's sometimes now artists lose that 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 magic that they had yeah. in their voices. You know, mm-hmm. is that something that that you guys worry about at times? And I know you've seen it many times with different artists. You know, who yeah. who actually lose that mm-hmm. yeah. that gift. You know? It's it's because um, they don't take care of the gift. The gift is from God, and and you have to respect Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave you a talent, you know, um, and and we all, when when I first started singing, we all parted and had a good time, but then when I realized that this is my total gift, I changed my whole attitude. Mm. You know, you have to, you can't party every night after you get off stage. You have to go back and go to bed. Mm -hmm. You have to rest your voice. And um, yeah. and that's what I do, and 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 that's why I instill in all the younger artists, you know, take a minute and get some rest. Rest your voice. You can't sing all day or sing for two or three hours, then get up, go go out and drink and right. smoke and and have a good time and expect to be perfect the next day. Mm-hmm. It may not bother you now, right? Yeah. But catch him years down the road, mm. and you see what happened. And this is what that is what has happened to some of our artists today from our genre. Yeah. You know, they didn't take care of themselves. Yeah. And if you do take care of your voice, and you manage to last a certain amount of years, it gets better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As we've all just witnessed, I mean, he didn't miss a beat. Tony, when you... Ask him to sing something a cappella. He didn't have to, you know, go and warm up and <laughs> do anything crazy. He just hit it, and it was all right there. Mm-hmm. And range, right? I mean, his range, mm-hmm. everything. You have not missed anything. Thank you. And uh, it's getting better. It's that, it's that gospel. It's that gospel. Yes. <laughs> you know, he's got, the, you got, yes. got God in his life, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, he's definitely... He's blessed you, he's blessed the Manhattans, and he's blessed us by listening to you and supporting your music. Thank you. So... 
We're going to check you out when you're on the main stage. All right. So yeah. happy. Can't wait to hear you. Welcome back thank to you. the Soul Train Cruise. Welcome back to All Access. Absolutely. And we thank you all for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Gerald Alston and the Manhattans. Thank I just you, like Troy. to do one thing. Is, yes. um, Cold is back there, yeah. our keyboard player. And our producer and other keyboard player, both of them producers, is Curtis Dukes right there over in the corner. And um, he produced the whole album. Nice. He put it together. And i just like to give a shout out to those guys. And if any other uh, members are here, you know, um, it, that's another part of my thing. There's no me without you. Oh, that's we could not make it without those gentlemen mm. and the rest of our Fantastic. Group. Let's give them a round of applause, folks. This is why we love you so much. Heart of gold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.